Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from um, Rick Nalisnik, W3AMT, and he has a question about a new antenna. He is moving his uh, station to a new shed apart from his house. He says he's always used a homebrew vertical for many years. They do work well. He said, it has served me well. Now for my new antenna, I'm going to use a 49 to 1 on on. Now that immediately implies an end-fed dipole, because that's the unun that you use for that, okay? With it mounted on a mast on the back of my shed, now that would mean one end, because um, you need to put the other end of the dipole somewhere else, like out in a tree or so. Okay, now for my question. Now I'm guessing here that he's not putting up another vertical because you don't need a 49 to 1 on on for a vertical at all. Um, now for my question. My shed has a metal roof. Okay. My mast is 30 feet tall, heavy duty, high pressure off water pipe. Now should I put the union above or below the roof? Now the term union is a plumbing term referring to a type of uh, joint between two pipes that you can butt together without having to push the pipes apart from each other to fit the um, union in, okay? But it could also mean his uh, anun here. He wants to know if he puts the union above or below the roof. If you are referring to a plumbing problem, talk to a plumber, uh, because the union is definitely a place where it's not going to be so strong, okay? It will want to bend uh, at that point right there. Should you put that above or below the roof? Um, I would suggest putting it above the roof where you can get at it. And uh, then when you put up your end-fed dipole, guy back on the other side so you don't put a lot of sideways stress on that union. Um, I did wind the union myself with three votes. I think something got lost in the translation here. I think he's meaning unun. I did wire myself the unun with uh, three, I think he's referring to ferrite cores and a 20 kilovolt 100 picofarad cap. I run a Johnson Viking Valiant. Any help would be greatly welcome. 73 from Rick, W3AMT. Okay, so let's uh, draw a picture of this. But before we do, I want to pay a special thank you to Terrence Bone. He is a patron of mine and has been for a while, and I really appreciate his support. You too can become a patron of my channel by going to patreon.com slash ke0og and pick a method that works for you. So let's take a look at this. He's on a shed of, well, this isn't a shed roof, is it? Um, but it's a building. Okay, now he's got a pole coming up somewhere here that's attached to the roof, attached to the ground. There may be a union in it. Now what a union is, if you've got a piece of pipe, you can cut the pipe right at one point, okay, then you pull them apart so they're like this, and you slip over this end a piece that goes on here that has a flat surface, and it will be right where the two end. Okay, so that's on this end. And on this end here, you slip on a fitting that has a screw ring and the screw ring screws over onto this and pulls the two ends of the pipe together, which just like they were before. And uh, because of the way that these fittings are made, there's no leakage. And then it's undoable. You can unwind it so that um, you can take the piece of pipe out later. The problem is that this has the force against the water inside won't come out but 
it does reduce the amount of force that can be applied this way that might cause this thing to bend right at that union. So another thing you can do is parallel these with other pipe and put hose clamps around and so on. Okay? Or you can find another piece of pipe that's just a little narrower, shove it in each end, screw it in so it stays, and that will give you some more strength too. Now let's uh, look at feeding uh, that 49 to 1 Anon. The 49 to 1 Anon goes right at the end of the antenna. So let me get my brown back here and make this pipe a little taller again. Okay, and this, you're going to have your, off, your end fed dipole go from here off to maybe a tree or something over here and follow the correct dimensions to make that uh, the off-center fed dipole, okay? Uh, there is one that's made by the ARRL that's 66 feet long and it's got instructions not only for winding the unun but for putting the whole thing together. So this is where the 49 to 1 uh, anon goes. Now an anon has got a hot side and these are connected together down here and this is ground. So you've got the hot side that you feed to the antenna and then this over here is your center line on the coax and this is the shield. So we'll draw it this way like that. Okay. This goes here, but that begs the question, where does that go? This goes to a counterpoise or something. It could be as simple as this pipe itself, okay? If that doesn't work, try running a wire down to the ground to a ground rod down here, okay? Run it down there. You'll have to experiment a little. And finally, you'll find a place where uh, you can do very well and get your antenna to tune well. The only tuning that you have on this is the length. Now the problem is this affects all bands. And so if you bring 40 in right in the center, it might throw off 20, 15, 10, so on. Okay, so you need to find the right compromise for length on these. And if uh, you do it right, you should be able to get a good serviceable antenna out of that. So that's where you put your 49 to 1 Anon. Now what is a 49 to 1 Anon? 49 to 1 Anon is usually wound on a ferrite core. And you'll have like one, two, three windings here. And this is ground. This is the center conductor. Okay. And then it'll continue on here, um, going around and around and around and around and around. Uh, if you're going to do a 49 to 1 ballon, you need a 7 to 1 ratio. So if it's three turns, it's going to be a total of uh, seven, 49 turns. We need a 49 to 1. So therefore, we have a turns ratio a seven to one. So this is usually about two turns, and then this up here is about 14 turns. So you have a seven to one turn ratio. Okay, and then that way you get your 49 to one anon, because note that this is an auto transformer, and so this part down here is grounded. It's grounded for both. This is where you connect your counterpoise which gives this something to work against. It's, you, counterpoise is usually somewhat capacitive, uh, so it could go down directly to ground. It could just be a wire hanging there. It could be the outside of the coax since it's connected to it, which means you've got to take this over to some ground or something so you can ground the shield before it goes into the shack. And that tells you a little bit about that. Okay, I think we've talk quite a bit about this here. So there you have it. I hope we have answered your question 
about what you can do uh, up on that pole. The 49 to 1 unun implies an N-fed dipole. You could, I suppose, make that dipole vertical if you wanted and feed it that way, but you definitely need a counterpoise if you're going to do that. I'd recommend the, uh, you know, a long wire going to a tree or a fence or whatever you can get it to where people won't hit it as they walk under it. So there you have it. Thank you for your question. If you would like to help support this channel financially, go to dcastler.com support and look for a way that works for you. And until we next meet, 73.